a five card poker hand is dealt. Let the event A be that the hand contains a single pair. Find the probability of A. And I include an example here of a single pair as a pair of eights. In this particular hand we got the eight of hearts and the eight of clubs. And to have a single pair that means the other three cards must be all different ranks other than the rank chosen for the pair. So in this case the king, four, and ace round out the hand. We're trying to figure out the probability of dealing such a hand. So that is P of A. Now in the denominator here we are going to go ahead and write 52 choose 5 and that is the total number of poker hands that can be dealt, five card poker hands that can be dealt from a 52 card deck. The fact that combinations are being used there means that the order that the cards are delivered to the hand is not important. Now that turns out to be 2,598,960 different poker hands. So of those two and a half million poker hands we want to figure out how many of them contain a single pair. So up top we are going to start with 13 choose 1. And 13 choose 1 is saying of the 13 ranks that are out there, namely ace, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, queen, king, we have 13 different choices and we're choosing one of those ranks. In this particular case we chose 8 and that is the first part of the numerator. Now once we choose the rank of the pair, then there are four different suits that can be taken, chosen from, and we're going to select two of them. In this particular case, we chose hearts and clubs, but we could have chosen spades and clubs or any number of other possibilities, and four choose two are six different ways to do this. Notice that we're again using combinations which means if we choose hearts and clubs or if we choose clubs and hearts we have the same hand and that's why combinations are being used here. Now implicit in this numerator is these two are being multiplied. So the multiplication rule says we take our number of ranks here once we've chosen those then we multiply our by our four choose two which is six which is the number of ways of choosing the um, suits. Now that takes care of the eights and now we've got to go on to the three other cards. Well the first thing we do is we say there are 12 remaining ranks and we choose three of those ranks. In this particular case we chose a king, a four, and an ace. But we could have also chosen a three, a seven, and a jack. So there are 12 choose 3 different ways to, to select the rank of the other three cards and notice the order isn't important. If we would have chosen ace, four, and king it still would have been those three ranks. And then finally we have to choose a suit for each one of those. So out of the four suits we choose one but we do that three times so I'll just put a little cubed up there. When you multiply that out, you get 1,098,240. And when you plug that into a calculator, that is approximately 4226. Now, this should match intuition, which is to say this is an event that happens 42% of the time. And that kind of makes sense because you could see quite often that a single pair will get uh, dealt out so this is a pretty common event. One last thing, there is a common mistake that I see from time to time when people are doing this for the first time. They will occasionally put a 48 choose 3 out here. They'll say hey once I have 
taken care of my pair there's 48 remaining cards and all I need to do is choose three of them well here's the problem with that I can't choose any for any three of the remaining 48 cards for example if I got Jack Jack and Jack here as these three then I'd have a, a, a hand known as a full house so when you put a 40 48 choose three in there unfortunately that would include two pair and it would also include a full house and we do not want to include those we only want to get the probability of getting a single pair.